Hello everybody, I hope you're having a wonderful day. I would like to give my take on the knife collection around the $500 range. I've seen a handful of other YouTube channels do it and I really enjoyed their videos. Uh, for example, Stasa23 and Jared over there at Neves Knives, they both did it. Um, great videos, plenty of input. Um, so, I'm just gonna have a go at it. So the first thing I wanted to put to the table is going to be a, uh, a dressed up occasion knife. So the concept behind this is that it needs to be relatively thin, lightweight, and you know, fancy looking. And this right here is the Wii Kite Fin. This comes in at $157.25 currently. This pricing is being pulled from Blade HQ, one of my favorite online retailers. There are many different versions of this knife. <clears throat> There's even full titanium versions with some really cool like milling patterns and things like that, but that would drive the, the weight overall up. This one specifically is the bead blasted finished blade with the shred carbon fiber. There is a marbled carbon fiber, but this example is the shred. Uh, it has bronze anodized hardware, including the pivot, and it has these little holes that are polished, anodized, chamfered, and the clip overall is a bent titanium clip that has been heat anodized. So in my opinion, this is probably the most fancy version or dressed up version of the weak kite fin so there's that guy you can see it is extremely extremely thin a very very delicate tip you don't want to be doing anything crazy with this thing um but it is a very satisfying there you go, putting three more scratches into the table <laughs> it's a very very snappy little knife and i do definitely enjoy it and highly recommend it if you guys are interested i do have videos like my own little reviews on all of these knives I'm going to be showing you. So there's that guy. That's going to be the fancy knife, the dressed up knife. And then the next one, and this one's kind of a two part, but this one's going to be the one to keep the overall collection uh, under 500. So this is going to be the Spyderco Native 5 Lightweight. This specific version was a Blade HQ exclusive. It is no longer available. Um, good luck trying to find that on the secondary market. People may mark them up or you know abuse them and still try to resell them for regular price, if anything. But currently, Blade HQ has their uh, exclusive, which is a coated M4 blade, including the hardware, backspacer, and clip is all blacked out, but the scales are this quite vibrant mint FRN, and that one is actually $134. That's the one that I would recommend over this one. Um, I've had two knife, I well, currently still have a knife from Spider Co. with M4, amazing, amazing steel. If you've heard other people saying, oh, it's, it's a bitch to sharpen, it really isn't, it's really not that bad. So I, I personally don't see any difference in sharpening it versus my other knives, but it holds an amazing edge and I, I love M4, especially from the Spyderco brand. Um, I also had a, a lightweight, what was it? It, was a, it was a pair of three lightweight. I ended up gifting that away. And uh, yeah, that's, that's the one that I would definitely recommend and specifically the coated M4 because M4 can corrode. So with it being coated, it should be perfectly fine. So that's the one that I would get. Um, let's see. Oh, I didn't even bother talking about like, you know, what's so great about this knife. It's not super, super fidgety, but once it breaks in and you got some buff ass fingers, you can definitely, you know, flick it out and do real basic stuff with it. Spider flick, thumb flick, whatever. You can't really do that because it's there's there's a lot a lot of tension um, with the you know the lock locking back mechanism. 
very comfortable hand filling all the edges are well rounded off and it's just an amazing knife extremely easy to maintain and take apart clean and all that good stuff goes in and out of the pocket quite well so the next little knife that i want to bring to the table this is the Civivi knives baby banter now this one specifically is 59 dollars and 50 cents and what you get for that is and this comes in a crap ton of different colors. Just go on Blade HQ and you're going to see just just a handful of them. They're, they're really cool. So this is the one that I specifically chose. This is the OD green and the gold thumb studs. So this is a little knife. The purpose behind this is just um, to have a really small like office carry or extremely light duty. No frills or thrills. Not trying to scare anybody. You know with a little with a little pocket knife and what's so amazing about this small pocket knife is that it actually has a blade stock thickness that serves this overall design really well i've seen a handful of other and also handle other small knives that have blades as thick as knives on full size or large size knives and that just doesn't make any sense if you're going to scale a knife down you need to, everything about it needs to be scaled down so the only thing that wasn't scaled down is a pocket clip. This is a full size freaking pocket clip and it takes up almost the entire span. This is over half the span of the closed length of the of the knife itself. But regardless, um, in my opinion, I, I don't feel it. I don't feel the clip. A little bit of jimping back here. Um, it's almost pointless because when you are utilizing that uh, forward finger twirl right there, there also is jimping right in there too, which is cool. It's a nice little touch. Um, my thumb goes f way past the jimping on the spine of the blade and it just makes it kind of pointless, but that's all right. I mean, it, it's so small, it's easy to get a good grip on this thing in a pinch grip and access to the lock bar is extremely, extremely easy. It does have ball bearings, but because it's such a light, thin knife, it's not going to be like drop shutty, but you can, you know, like just wheel it out with your thumb. If you're not trying to be like too like, you know, aggressive sounding about it, you can also reverse flick it. It's not gonna go flying out of your hand. Just, you know, play with it for a minute and you know, you'll get the hang of it, literally. Um, also goes great in and out of the pocket. There's nothing in the way. Little lanyard hole, if you wanna stick something on it. This is, uh, I'm, don't, I don't really care for lanyards, but this would be one knife I would recommend putting a little lanyard fob on or something to get a little bit of a extra you know purchase that's you know if if you want so there's that little guy um oh, i did want to mention too that currently blade hq is having a new variant of this available it's it's for pre-order so you put five bucks down and it's actually i think what was it? i wrote it down i can't read my writing No, oh, sixty-one dollars. So fifty-nine fifty. So for a a buck fifty more, you get a uh, green micarta. But everything else is pretty much still the same. So Civivi does great micarta, and I'll be showing you an example of that in just a second. So there's that. Uh, that will drive the price overall up, but uh, by a buck fifty, you know. So nothing too crazy there. The next one is going to be a more utili utility shaped knife, but also with fidget factor. So, well, knives are great to use and all, it's also kind of fun to play around with them too. So, and in my collection, I think this is about the most comfortable one to mess around with. It's a very satisfying snap. <coughs> Jesus, I am sorry about that. I had it sitting for a minute. But this is the Civivi Knives Chevalier, and this currently comes at, uh, let's see, $71.50, this current version. You can get this a little bit cheaper, that is a black, a black G10 and a silver blade for $69 versus the $71.50, and all you're really getting is just, you know, my carta. That's a preference thing. You can get it a little bit cheaper. 
um, if you're okay with Black G10 and you want a more simpler version, but this is uh, my example, really. And what I enjoy so much about this knife is the shape. It is a very thin, goes through material rather well. Very simple bent steel pocket clip, nothing in the way, it sits on the scales, and that's all right. And it's just, it's really, really fidgety. Like, look at that. And this thing has broken in rather well. So there is this little uh, channel right here that you can get your nail into and you can, you know, flick it out. And it's a very, very satisfying, solid, you know, click. Also, you can flick it out with your thumb. Not too great at that, but it is possible. There we go. And then, of course, just a regular flipper. You can also just press the button and it'll release and lock. If you time it right, that's all you really need. So this is a much larger, more hand-filling knife, um, but because of the blade shape, it's definitely going to be really nice at going through material. So there's that guy. And then, last for keeping the collection under 500, is going to be the Petrified Fish PF838. One of my viewers um, commented and said that, uh, yeah, I forgot what he said. He said that the name of this one was The Pub, I think. Uh, not too sure about that. I haven't done my own research. I haven't even put out my own uh, review of this knife, but it is definitely coming soon. I just need to you know, take it apart and sharpen it again. I have worn it out. This is a very, very heavy, large knife there is little to no weight relieving of the steel liners in there and it just has these thick g10 scales i mean everything is contoured and it also has these really nice looking uh carbon fiber inlays there they're finished quite well uh d2 blade material if i didn't mention that before um and i do appreciate that it's coated uh this specific one well, I guess this model, uh, you can get it from Amazon, and it is $35.99. So this is a whole lot of freaking knife for that little bit of money. It really is. And with that, it keeps it, you know, under the $500 for the collection. And this thing is just awesome. It really is. So this is going to be like the the cheap beater knife because it really is significantly cheaper than everything and just because a knife is big doesn't justify value like take this for example this baby banter the entirety of this knife probably weighs less than just the blade itself yet the baby banter costs more that's uh that's nothing new to the you know to the knife community there really isn't so don't uh don't associate weight and size with value it it ranges all over the place sometimes when things are smaller it takes a little bit more uh tedious fit and finish to get things scaled down and still be able to operate the same way as a large knife um, if this knife was offered in a mini i can't say confidently that it would feel the same but this thing does feel pretty freaking sweet. So this is really just meant to be thrown around, used and abused. There is a full G10 version, I believe, without the carbon fiber scales. I think it might come at the same price, but this is my example of it. And uh, yeah, this is just a full-size freaking beater knife. Uh, D2 blade material is great. It's super easy to sharpen. Um... And yeah, that's about it. So the couple of the things that I wanted to bring to the table, just because they're such popular knives, especially one of them, um, to switch out for the uh, Spyderco Native 5 Lightweight, I wanted to put the Benchmade Knives Bug Out as, you know, like to, to replace it, but it would also drive the value up. So... This current version was actually a Blade HQ exclusive. I have dyed these scales to this color. 
I don't really know what this color is, like OD green, but they were originally gray. And the one that I would currently get that is available on Blade HQ is the all blacked out carbon fiber elite. And what's cool about that one is that you get a, in my opinion, a full size knife that weighs 1.8 ounces. Like, holy crap, that's basically nothing. And you get a very capable light to medium duty knife. Of course, you don't ever want to pry with your knives, but I mean, Benchmade knives, well, in a lot of people's eyes, and mine too a little bit here and there with some of their models, are overpriced. They are made in the US and are actually built really well. They're an absolute pain and a nightmare to take apart, but I mean, these things are built well. So I definitely stand behind the, the two examples of Benchmade that I have. I have the Osborne 940 and this bug out. Um, I use them in my size comparisons, and those are the only two Benchmades that I have. I love both of these knives. Uh, but the Carbon Fiber Elite, if I didn't say the price, it is $157.50. So honestly, not that bad. This blade is Q version with the 20 CV blade material was actually like 200 or like 210 or something like that before taxes and shipping. Um, but I was able to... I didn't buy this one at full price. I actually got it from another YouTuber that was doing a sale. Uh, Love Them Knives is another you know member of this community. And I've purchased like three or four knives from him at this point. And it's like the smoothest transaction ever. The money is sent to him. And in like three days or so, I get a cool knife at a heavily discounted price. So there's that guy. Um, switching these two out and keeping everything else the same would keep it under just just under the $500 mark but also if you were to switch out the petrified fish 838 with the kubi knives KU322 for 50 bucks uh, it would definitely bring the price past that, but not by much, really not by much. And with that, you're getting a really, really smooth, large knife, relatively thin and behind the edge, very tall blade. So it's going to move through material rather well and multiple deployments. So you have, of course, a flipper tab. You have the hole for the front. You can spidey flick it. And what else? I mean, that's really about it. But I mean, you have a hole, you have a flipper tab. That's uh, three deployment methods essentially. And while it may not be as contoured as the petrified fish, this kubi is still relatively large in the hand and really filling. So this is also a really comfortable, cheap knife. So this guy is 50 bucks. Currently right now there is a G10 version with a silver stone wash blade. And that one's $42.52. So, I mean, that's a couple bucks shaved off uh, to bring it a little bit closer to that $500 price point. But this whole collection is not including shipping and taxes because you know, from wherever you're watching, it costs different. You know, taxes are different. Shipping fees are different and all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> so just going off of the value of these knives, none of these were on sale. None of these were like on special or like any kind of deal. This is, I looked up their current price right before this video and this is what they are. So fancy knife, little guy, lightweight, other possible lightweight. Let's bring this a little further down. Sorry about that. Fidgety box slayer and then heavy duty knife and then po other possible heavy duty knife. So these are out of my collection, the knives that I would recommend to somebody who would want to start building a knife collection and has some money that they want to throw to get you know quality items. So all these knives I definitely stand behind and I highly recommend of course have individual videos on these unboxing first impressions, um, you know, possible comparisons in the future. This is the only one that hasn't had its review yet, but I'm gonna just tell you guys now, it's great. 
for the price it's it's an absolute winner but yeah that's that's about it i hope you guys enjoyed this video it was a little bit longer than the majority of my other videos but regardless i will be putting the links in the description take a look at these knives and their various multitude of uh, color options and you know even blade steel options um, and yeah take care love you guys all have a wonderful day